Well, praise God. Let's get into the Word today um, on this first Sunday in June. And I'm going to ask you to turn with me to the book of Job chapter 1. Uh, Job chapter 1, we're going to um, read at the outset from verse 18 down to verse number 22. Um, Job chapter 1. Amen. Let's read, let's look at it together. Job 1, 18 through 22 reads as follows. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. 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 Let's pray together. Father, we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise right now as we come to this point, O oh God, we, where we will hear your voice. Father, it's yes, by Lord. faith that we believe you shall speak from yes, heaven Lord, unto us. And so we thank you in the name of Jesus for speaking words of life and words, O oh God, that will strengthen us in our faith. Father, we ask you to have your way, O oh God. Yes, speak, O oh Lord, make it plain, O oh God. Give us a heart of understanding, and Father, give us obedient a spirit of obedience that we may walk out your word, O oh God, in the yes, name of Father. Jesus, that we may be blessed, that you may be glorified, and that others may be touched by the power of the living God. Yes. Father, I ask you right now to look upon everyone under the sound of my voice, both near and far, and Father, bless them with revelation. Yes. And Father, I ask you to help me, O oh God, by your power and by your spirit, as I humble myself before you, help me, God, to do your will. Not my will, but your will be done yes, Father. in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you now for your goodness. We thank you now for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We yes. give you the praise in Jesus' great name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, this Sunday, amen, this, this day, um, June 4th, Standing up here today with a red shirt on and a bow tie. Amen. 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 And um, in honor of Joseph. Amen. Amen. Uh, Praise the Lord. Picture is right here at my right hand. Amen. Amen. We know Joe is with the Lord today. Amen. Um, and you know, um, I I wore this tie, mm -hmm. and not this tie, this shirt, at his home going. Mm -hmm. Um, because Joseph, as you can sort of get a sense from the picture, but definitely if you knew him, um, he loved colors, mm -hmm. right? Um, I wore this shirt at his home going. I haven't worn it since mm -hmm. because I just I don't wear red shirts, right? <laughs> Joseph wear a red shirt. He would wear light blue pants, <laughs> right? You yeah. know, pink, pink, yeah. all kinds of colors, right? You know. I'm more conservative, right? I'm a lawyer, right? So give me black, blue, and gray. And if I throw in a splash of pinstripe in it, then I'm saying something, right? Um, but Joseph was different, amen. And so I wanted to uh, put on something today that was more of him as um, we talk about, amen, that the fact that it was on June 4, two years ago, that Joseph was in an accident. And, you know, I, I almost hesitate to say Joseph was in an accident because it almost makes it seem like he did something. No, he didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And he didn't do anything, right, except go through a green light when he had it. Mm -hmm. And it was the other driver 
a 74-year-old man with bad eyesight mm -hmm. who didn't want to stop at a red light and actually changed lanes to get around a car that had stopped. Mm -hmm. And he goes through the light and hits Joseph's car. Yeah. So when I say Joseph's an accident, it almost makes it seem like he did something, like he was texting or wasn't paying attention. He had nothing to do with it other than being on the wrong end of someone's wrongful decision. Um, but, you know, that happened on June 4th, so two years ago today, and so I just want to take time to acknowledge that um, and acknowledge Joe. Um, and Joseph passed away the next day following the accident. He was, what, 22 years old Yes. when he went to be with the Lord. And, um, you know, the... Um, Everything that's associated with that, the pain, the sadness, um, it was immense then, and it's still immense today. Amen. Um, and it's only by the grace of God that I think for my wife and I, for our, for our daughters, and for those who knew and loved Joe, it's only by his grace that we find our way forward. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. But the truth is, you know, you go forward living with a hole in your heart, a void in your life that is never going to be filled, at least on this side of glory. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, you know, we do have memories of Joe. Some of you shared some of it today, made us laugh, made us remember. We have pictures of Joe, we have video. Um, and those things can lift our spirits as we contend with that awful reality that his life was taken too soon. Amen. Yes, amen. Um, we 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 come to this place today in the scripture using Job and the verses that we just read, Job chapter one, verses eighteen through twenty-two, is the last in the series of announcements that Job had gotten on a particular day. He had been told that he lost parts of his business, that all kinds of things were going wrong. He had three messengers come to him, giving him some bad news regarding that. And then the fourth messenger came and told him perhaps the worst news of all. Mm -hmm. And that was that his sons and his daughters, and he had ten sons and daughters, right? I think it was seven sons and three daughters that they were eating and drinking in the eldest brother's house and a wind came from the wilderness, knocked the house down, and killed them all. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, you, you think about, you know, you think about this in the context of, at least I do, in the context of us losing Joseph. And I just want to talk today about when a child dies because... That is something that um, is tough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tough is not even a good word to describe it, right? It's more than tough. Um, my wife and I were talking yesterday, and you know, we, we acknowledge that in the immediate family unit, we have words for those who lose a spouse. Mm -hmm. The wife is a widow. The husband is a widow word. We have a word for a child who loses his parents or her parents. That that, that child is an orphan. Mm -hmm. But there is no one word in the human language that describes the parent who loses a child. Mm -hmm. There's not a word for it. And I think that's significant because it really underscores the fact that there are no words to describe the heartache and the pain that comes Amen. with it. Mm -hmm. That humans haven't been able to come up with a word that can say that a person or a parent who loses a child is called this because it's unspeakable. Mm -hmm. There's not a word for it. Amen. And I think that's because, you know, as parents, right, you know, you joyfully bring your children into this world, right? Mm -hmm. You're part of that. You're part of a life coming into the world. And, and you know, um, and it's a, it's a, it's a pain and a, and a heartache to see that person leave this world out of time. Mm 
Yes. You know, to our way of thinking, a child dying before his or her parents violates the natural order of things. It's not supposed to be that way. In my mind, Joseph is supposed to be here. Amen. Amen. Living among us, growing into the man God created him to be. A child of promise, covered by the promises of God. You know, like many of you, right, and any godly parent, right, you cover your children in prayer, right? Amen. Sister Fennell and I cover and continue to cover our children in prayer. Mm -hmm. And you know, I can tell you, I can't even, I can't even tell you how many times I prayed Psalm 91 over my family, mm -hmm. right? Over, over Sister Fennell, over Brandy, over Jasmine, over Joseph, over Christian, over myself, right? You know, you pray these psalms of protection. I, and I, you know, we who dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That's how I prayed, right? Because it was collectively, right? I've just brought all of them before the Lord. We who dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will save the Lord. He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in him will we trust. Surely he shall deliver us from the snare of the fowl and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover us with his feathers and under his wings shall we trust. His truth shall be our shield and buckler. Pray these things, amen. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh us. Only with our eyes shall we behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord, which is our refuge, even the most high our habitation, there shall no evil befall us, Neither shall any plague come not our dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. They shall bear us up in their hands lest we dash our foot against the stone. Amen. We shall tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall we trample from the feet. And then in the last three verses, the Lord speaks. Because they have set their love upon me, therefore will I deliver them. I will set them on high because they have known my name. They shall call upon me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With long life will I satisfy them and show them my salvation. I prayed that thing, man. Mm -hmm. Believed every word of it. Appropriated every promise and called it true. So I'm telling you the truth. In the last two years, God and I have had some conversations Amen. about Psalm 91. You said no evil shall befall us. You said you would give your angels charge over him. You said that. Yes. You said the angels will take him up in his hands and keep him from dashing his foot against the stone. That's what you said. Yes. You said that if I called upon you, you would answer me, but I called upon you to raise him up and you didn't do it. You said that. You said with long life you would satisfy him. You said that. And I, and I lift up my hands and had to say, you lied to me, Lord. Wow. I speak as a man. But when I speak from my spirit, I say let God be true and every man a liar. Mm -hmm. When I speak from my spirit, I say God is good. When I speak from my spirit, I say that God's judgments are unsearchable and his ways are past finding out. 
When I speak from my spirit, I say his ways are not my ways, neither are his thoughts my thoughts. And he's sovereign. And there are going to be some things that I'm not just going to understand of how God puts all these things together and why he allows some things to happen and keeps other things from happening. Because God is sovereign and I'm not. And so I just got to trust in the character of God and in his goodness. So in my flesh, I rail against heaven, but in my spirit, I worship and honor God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And through it all, God is teaching and showing and revealing some things and allowing me to come to observe and learn some things that I'm hopeful will be helpful to those parents who have lost a child mm -hmm. and will be helpful to those who know a parent who has lost a child. I remember long ago, years and years ago, reading that some of your best ministry comes from your deepest pain. Yeah. I'm now confessing that and calling that marker in in the hope that somebody will be blessed what God's going to say today. Amen. But you know, losing a child, right? For those who lose a child, and here's the thing. You know, for a parent who loses a child, no matter how old that child is, from stillborn to full-grown adult, I'm telling you, it's heartbreaking in ways that are impossible to articulate. Mm -hmm. It's an unspeakable grief that I don't think can be grasped by anybody unless they're unfortunate enough to be a part of a club whose membership dues are astronomically high. Wow. You have a little one, or you can have a full-grown son or daughter. The pain is still a good one, because that's your kid. That's your child. Full grown adult, but that's my child. That's my girl. That's my boy. So I want to talk to those who've lost a child first and just hopefully offer some encouragement from heaven. Amen? If you lost a child, first thing I will say to you is this. Grieve as you will. Amen. 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 Don't allow others to put parameters or limitations on you, uh, you know, and don't you do it to yourself. Give yourself room to grieve. And understand that your grieving is going to make some people feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they feel uncomfortable is because they feel powerless to do anything for you. And I'm telling you, and this includes not just, this includes people in the church. Amen. Do you remember the disciples, amen? They were, I was sharing this assistant on yesterday. The disciples, amen, on, on that hill, there's 5,000 people that Jesus is teaching. And they're hungry. And the disciples know they're hungry. And, 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 but yet the disciples knew they couldn't feed so many people. And so what happened, brother? Lord? They got uncomfortable. Yes. And what did they want Jesus to do? They go to Jesus and they say, send them away. Yeah. See, when, when, when you believe you can't do something for someone in need, you'd rather not see them. Mm -hmm. Send them away, Lord. They're hungry. <laughs> what kind of thing is that? Send them away. They're hungry. Now, Lord, can you feed them? Send them away. See, when we're not able to do something for someone, when we feel powerless, we'd rather, that's why you don't want to see that uncle who's struggling with the addiction. Oh, he's going to be there? I'm not going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want to see that co-worker who's down on the, like, oh, here she comes, and you try to divert and, and go down the other hallway. It's, a, it's something about people in need, and when we can't do anything about it, we'd rather not see them. Because now we're not reminded of our powerlessness. Wow. But listen, if you're in that situation where you've lost a child, I'm just telling you, you grieve as you will. 
And, and just understand that some people can't handle it, but that's okay. You got to give yourself room, amen, to grieve and allow God to heal you, amen. amen. The other thing I would say to a person who's lost a child is understand that life is never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Amen? It's just not. Right? You're going to have a hole in your life and in your heart that can't be filled by anything. Right? Good things are going to come. I'm not saying that. But they're always going to be tinged with something that's incomplete. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, uh, something happens. and uh, Maybe you get a promotion. Maybe you get a new house. Maybe you get this or that or the other thing. Maybe one of your other children go on and accomplish something. But there's always going to be an undercurrent of this is incomplete. Why? Because the one... Someone should be here yes. to share in this. Mm -hmm. And they're not. Yes. That could be hard to grasp, but see, it's rather life is not going to be the same. But life will go on. Amen. Right? By God's grace, uh, you know, God I don't know how he does it. I really don't. I really don't. I really don't. Sister Vanell mentioned it earlier. She said if it wasn't for faith and the grace of God, she couldn't stand up here. Amen. How many people know that to be true in any event, <laughs> but how much the more when you lose a child? Amen. By the grace of God, you're able to pick up the pieces. But that's a process, though, that is going to go on every single day of your life because a part of your life and your heart is forever broken. It's an amazing thing that there will be this, this sudden outburst of tears and anger, mood swings and emotional upheavals. That's just part of it, amen? And, 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 and you know, pray be unto God that there'll be people around you who will be able to understand that and give you the room without any kind of commentary on whether or not that should be taking place. Because it's part of the reality and, 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 and it's something that I believe that as you're going through, you just have to give yourself the room to go through it. Yeah. The other thing I think for people um, who have lost a child is to understand this. Some old friends are going to disappear. I didn't say all of them. I said some. some. Some old friends are going to disappear. Mm -hmm. But some new friends are going to emerge. Amen. Yes. And as much as it hurts to be let down by people who you thought would be there for you, your time is better spent embracing those both new and old who are there. Don't spend time on people who haven't who aren't showing up. Amen? Amen. I will tell you this, and I'm just speaking the truth. I know every person who I haven't heard from in two years. Amen. There are some people that I have broken bread with. There are some people I worship God with. There are some people I've been over their house and they've been over mine. People in the Lord. People who I just knew, but I haven't heard from them since they left my house after Joseph's funeral. I'm just telling the truth. Amen. Yes. Amen. But I don't spend. A, I, I I know it. And somebody said, oh, you're mad? No, I'm not mad. I don't, I don't have time for that. Amen. <laughs> uh-uh. Unforgiveness and anger, those kind of things only hurt me. That's right. so I don't have time for that. But that doesn't mean I don't know it's happened. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. I spend my time grateful for those who are around. Mm -hmm. for, those, for those faithful friends who haven't disappeared, yeah. become magicians. <laughs> <laughs> In a puff of smoke, they're gone. I'm grateful for those who have remained steadfast and unmovable. Yes. I'm grateful for those who, who acknowledge that life is not the same and every now and then just want to say, how you doing? Yes. Amen. I'm grateful for the ones who say, I thought about you this morning and sent a quick email or a text message. Yes. Amen. 
Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm grateful and I embrace those while I acknowledge and know that there are some, because they were uncomfortable or for whatever reason, have chosen to absent themselves from my life. Yes. But I praise God for the present ones. Amen. Amen. But understand, some people are not going to be there. But I will say this to you, any person who finds himself in this situation, don't become what you don't like. What are you talking about? Amen. Meaning that if you don't like the fact that people disappear on you in your time of need, then make sure you don't disappear yes. on other people. Amen. Because there are some other people who may not have lost a child, but they lost a job. They may not have lost a child, but they lost a spouse. They may not have lost a, a child, but they lost their savings or their house. They're going through some things. And, and there's a, something about human nature that in the immediate aftermath yes. of tragedy, in the immediate aftermath of sorrow, you don't lack company. Jesus. And of course, life does go on, but does life have to go on meaning that you forget about the person who went through the trauma? Wow. Who made up that rule? Yes, life goes on, but I can still, in this day of instant technology and Skype and messaging and Facebook yes. and email and text, you're going to tell me I can't take a moment to say, how you doing? <laughs> the devil is a liar. The only way that happens is because I will choose for it to happen. So I say to you, if it bothers you that some people have absented themselves purpose not to be the same way Amen. when you find out that people have gone through something you make sure that every now and then as God places them on your heart you reach out to them Amen. You, you, you acknowledge that I haven't forgotten about you yes. you invite them for a cup of coffee and they just think it's coffee but you know you came in because you're saying listen whatever they want to say I'm just going to be an ear to listen and a shoulder to lean on purpose not to become what you don't like. Amen. The last thing I'll say to those who have lost a child is don't beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that, brother? There's a tendency, I believe, that the pain of the loss it kind of buries you know, uh, 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 the good times and it magnifies the things that didn't get done. The things that the, the words that, that, that you did not say. <laughs> or the words you said that you shouldn't have said. Mm -hmm. But I would just say this. Because I just believe this is the truth. If you loved your child, then your child received your love. Mm -hmm. And was glad. Amen. Amen. But sometimes you think about, oh, I remember when I yelled at her. Oh, I remember, oh, I remember when I didn't do this and they wanted this. Oh, I remember when they wanted this for Christmas and I didn't give it to them. Oh, I mean. Wow. But I'm telling you, that wasn't your life. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, that wasn't your life. It wasn't about the misses. You have more makes than misses. Amen. Amen. You have more connections. Then the, but the pain somehow comes and it magnifies all the things that didn't. Yes. And God is here to tell you there's a whole lot more that did get through, that did make a difference, that did matter. So don't beat yourself up for the things you did not do. also would like to talk for a moment to those who know someone who's lost a child. You haven't. It didn't happen to you. And praise God, I pray it doesn't happen. How many of you know that? <laughs> but if you know somebody who's, who's, who's in that situation, a couple of things for you today, too. Accept the truth that there's little that you can say. Amen? It really is. I think one of the things that we make the greatest mistake of is believing that when someone's going through, you always have to open your mouth. <laughs> yeah. 
Amen. <laughs> There's very little you can say. Remember, the sadness is unspeakable. Amen. There's no word for it. Mm -hmm. But how many of you know that there is a tremendous value in you just being there? Yes, amen. Just being around. Just being a present friend. Just, just, just being in their presence, being available matters more than you will ever know. Amen. You may not have any pearls of wisdom to offer, but you have something more valuable to offer, and that's the gift of your presence. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't undervalue that. And if somebody today, or, or whenever you hear this word at some point, and you have absented yourself from someone who's in that situation, just simply now make yourself present in their life. Amen. Praise the Lord. That would be a blessing to them beyond measure. The other thing I would say to someone who knows a parent who lost a child is be patient with them as they grieve. Right? Mm -hmm. Don't try to put, don't try to edit them. Amen. You shouldn't say that. Amen. Don't try to judge them. Amen. Don't try to fix them. Don't put a clock on them and tell them they've been doing this long enough. Amen. Now it's time to Amen. move on. Thank you, Jesus. Don't edit. Don't fix. Don't judge. Don't be like Joe's friends. <laughs> Job lost everything. And the scripture says that he had three friends <laughs> who came to visit him. And as they came to visit him, they saw he was in immense pain, sorrow, and heartache. And for seven days, the Bible says, for seven days, they sat with Job and they didn't say a word. And then on day eight, they started speaking. And that's when they messed up. <laughs> they started saying things like, how long are you going to be laying here in these ashes? Jesus. They started saying things like, you must have done something. Mm -hmm. They started saying things like, bad things don't happen to innocent people. Mm -hmm. So your, your children must have done something. Jesus. They started talking and saying all kinds of things. And it was all because they felt Job needed to get up from where he was and get on with things and face certain realities. Who made you the judge? Just be present, but don't be an editor. Just be present, but don't be a timekeeper. Just be present. It should be noted <laughs> that, that at the end of the book of Job, when, when God restored everything unto Job, God had some words for his friends. <laughs> yeah, he did. And, 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 and he rebuked Job's friends and says, you, he told him, you have not spoken of me the thing which is right. In other words, you, you said so many things to Job and you were just talking out your face. Wow. You didn't know what you were talking about. That's why, listen, if you don't know what to say, just sip it. It's okay. <laughs> just be there because the more, listen, it says in a multitude of words, there lacketh not sin. Sometimes the more you say, the more susceptible you become to saying something you had no business saying. saying. Mm -hmm. And especially at a time like this. So give the parent room to grieve and don't be a timekeeper, an editor, or a judge. Amen. The last thing I'll say for those who know someone who's lost a child is this. Don't be afraid to speak about that child. Call him by name, remember things about him, amen. Sister Nell said it earlier today. The child lived. Mm -hmm. 
Don't pretend as if he did. Don't pretend as if she did. I know it makes people uncomfortable because they think, oh, I don't know if you're in a position yet today. Yeah, but you got to let your spirit lead you. Amen. But don't shut it down and say, I'm never going to mention him again. I'm never going to mention her again unless she does. Because sometimes they're waiting for you. And sometimes they, that that's, might be what they need. I, I might have told you this story. I shared it with Brandy yesterday. I went to a conference a couple of months after Joseph went to be with the Lord. It was a sports conference. And, you know, a bunch of sports lawyers were there. and I met a lawyer from the, the uh, National Football League Players Association. Mm -hmm. Never saw her before in my life. Haven't seen her since. And it was a multi-day multi conference. So on day one, you do the conference. And then at the end of the day, they had like a get-together for everybody who was at the conference. You know, the kind of thing you got to go to. And you kind of, man, I want to go back to my hotel room. <laughs> right? <laughs> but you feel you got to go. And so I went. Amen. And then you go there and you're meeting people. So everybody wants to know about you. Hey, what do you do? Where you from? Where you grew up? How you kids? You married? How many kids you got? Like, you know what I mean? You got, you got to go through that, right? Uh, and so she had come and she started, and then how many kids? And, and I thought, I have three. Amen. And so I told her about Brandy, and, and I told her about Jasmine, and then I told her about Joseph. Mm -hmm. And then she said what you would expect of her to say, oh, I'm so sorry. That's terrible. I can't, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine. And then, a, you know, a few minutes later after doing that, she kind of like, you know, looked at me and then I kind of like put her, her, her elbow on the table like this and said, so, tell me about Joseph. <laughs> I'll never forget that for as long as I live. Amen. Because no one has said that to me before or since. Wow. And the next thing you know, for the next 15, 20 minutes, we're talking about Joseph. So now she learned how, how he loved poetry, how he loved bow ties, how he loved colors, how he, how he wasn't the greatest student in school, but how he was a good kid, how I argued with him, how he argued back, how I loved him, how he was working with him. I mean, she learned all kinds of things about him. Why? Because she said, tell me about Joseph. Yes, amen. It remains one of the greatest blessings I've had in this period. And I think to myself, see, people who have lost, just because they've lost a child doesn't mean they don't want to talk about them. Amen. And it actually could lift their spirits because now you're not just talking about loss, you're talking about who they are. Yes. So I will say to someone, if you know someone who's lost them, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. right? Now don't go barreling in there like a bull in a china <laughs> shop the day after and trying to, right? But, but, yes. amen? amen? Jesus is made unto your wisdom. Act in the wisdom of God. All I'm saying is, don't be afraid. Amen. And if the Spirit leads you in that direction, don't you now talk the Spirit down by saying, oh, they may not be ready to receive. If God is leading you. Yeah. Amen. And the last thing, amen, I would just like to do is for those who have lost a, love, uh, a child and those who, who have it, but you know someone who has, let's understand something, amen, that we have a hope beyond the grave. We yes. really do. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I know for us, I know for me personally, and I pray for those, uh, we... One of the greatest blessings over these past couple of months has been our Bible study that we had. Amen. Yes. Family reunion, life in heaven. Amen. I don't know how long we were in that thing. I almost hesitate to say because somebody would say, y'all stayed in that thing too long. But it had to be about eight months. Yes, a year. It was a year. <laughs> No, it wasn't, Sister Bunnell. <laughs> it was not a year. We started it last summer. <laughs> oh, 
It was some months, amen? <laughs> no question about that. It was some months. But for me personally, and I pray for you too, that it, and for those who heard, it was a blessing, amen? Amen, it was. It's a it blessing. Was. Because we have a hope beyond the grave. And when Jesus says something, and how many of you know when Jesus says it, it's true. He says, in my Father's house. There are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. <laughs> That's true. Amen. Jesus even said, if it were not true, I would have told you. Yes. We have a hope, amen. Amen. We have a hope that, that this is not it. Amen. Praise God for this earth. Praise God for the beauty of this earth. Praise God for the beauty of people on it. Praise God for all the good things in this earth. But how many of you know, praise God that this earth is not all that there is. Amen. <laughs> yes. Because if this was it. Yes. Amen. Oh. <laughs> I'm signing out right now, Lord. Wait. I know that's right. But praise God, amen, that this is not it. So, so there was some insight and some strength and some comfort, amen, that came from the Bible. So just studying the Word of God and what He says mm -hmm. happens after this life is over. What He says happens to those who die in Christ. Mm -hmm. What He says awaits us as His family and as His children. Yeah. There's comfort in that. Amen. And there's comfort in the Word of God. Joseph was my son and my wife's son, but he was also Christian's uncle. Mm -hmm. He was also Jasmine and Brandy's brother. Amen. And I say to Jasmine and Brandy, there's comfort in the word of God found in John chapter 11. The word that Jesus said to Martha regarding Lazarus, I say to you today, thy brother shall live again. Amen. He shall rise again. Amen. Those are words that Jesus speaks. And I say them on the authority of the Holy Spirit. Jasmine and Brady, your brother shall rise again. Amen. Those are words of hope that extend beyond the grave. I say to Sister Fennell, recall the, the widow of Nain in Luke chapter 7, verses 13 through 15. Jesus sees the woman crying because she lost her only son. And they're carrying him out of the city gates. And in verse 13, Jesus goes on to the, 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 the mother and says, weep not. Yes. <laughs> and in verse 14, he speaks to the young man and he says, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And in verse 15, the word of God says that Jesus, and he delivered him to his mother. Yes. Ha! Sister now, those are words of comfort from Scripture because if, if God is no respecter of persons. What he did for the widow of Nain, he will do for you and Amen. bring your son back to you and deliver him unto you. Woman, weep not. Young man, I say unto you, Arise. Amen. And from scripture, I comfort myself because I look at Jairus and I say, Jairus was a father who lost his child. Yes. <laughs> but Jesus walked in on the scene and returned the child unto his father. Amen. And then for all of us, amen, whether we lost a child or lost a mother, lost a spouse, lost a, 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 a parent, lost a friend. Yes. yes. If they were in Christ, I just want to read 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 18. Amen. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep. Yeah. Lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, 
Even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Amen. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Yes. For the Lord himself yes. will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Yes. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Yes. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Whether you lost a child, a spouse, a friend, amen, a sibling, if they died in the Lord, you're going to see him again. Amen. Amen. I'm going to see this young man again. Yes. Amen. Praise amen. the Lord. Amen. It ain't over. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. It ain't over. There's that old story about the, 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 <laughs> the guy. The great chess match, right? To go to the picture, and, and when it's, it's, and Satan was calling checkmate, right? That's right. And, and they were looking at the picture, and it's, it's called checkmate. Mm -hmm. And the chess master just kept looking at the picture. <laughs> Everybody else walked down the hall, but they just know, okay, it's checkmate. <laughs> and they said, why are you still standing down there, man? <laughs> and the chess master kept looking at the picture, and he said, it's alive! It's alive! The king has one more move! I'm telling you right now, amen. Yeah, your loved one is not here, but it's alive. Yeah. The king has one more move! And that move, amen, is that he's going to join us ha, who remain mm -hmm. with those who went on before. We'll be caught up in the air and we're going to spend eternity with the Lord and with our loved ones. Amen. Family reunion. Yeah. Yeah. Life in heaven. Amen. Yeah. That's the final move right there. Amen. Praise amen. The Lord. <laughs> and it'll be God who calls checkmate. On the enemy of our soul. Amen. So I'm going to see Joseph again. Amen. Amen. Everybody in here in the Lord, you're going to see Joseph again. Amen. It's not when you see Joseph, he's going to have on some colors. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You're going to say, I heard about you. You're going to say, How you heard about me? And you're going to say, Because the people who loved you weren't afraid to tell me about you. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Huh? Amen. That's right. You're going to see your mama, those who lost their mothers in the Lord. You're going to see your dad. You're going to see your sister. You're going to see your brother. You're going to see your friend. You're going to see your wife. You're going to see your husband. Amen. If they died in the Lord, you're going to see them because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so we do not grieve as those who have no hope. That's just something for all of us, amen, who have suffered the passing of a loved one in the Lord, amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So God is only he can, amen, where there's no word for it, right? No word for a parent who lost a child. There's no word. There's no word. There's, there's, there's no word. What do you call it? What do you call it? But only God, where there's no word, has plenty of words for us, amen? amen. Words of comfort and of peace and of strength. Words that God can use. He steps into the void and he gives us word of hope. Hope of a resurrection. Hope of a, of a reunion. Hope of rejoicing. Yes. Amen. And he exhorts us to comfort one another with the words of his holy scriptures. Amen. Amen. So I pray today, amen, that for those who lost a child that the words of Paul from 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 
written by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, provide some comfort to you today. Amen. Yes. Amen. And that they serve as an anchor to your soul until the words of the scripture come to pass. And I also pray too, amen, that in some way, great or small, amen, that this message, amen, is a blessing to somebody who lost a child, and, and it's also a help to those who know someone in that situation, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. And so we praise God. Amen. amen. And so we stand here, amen, not even knowing how you do it. <laughs> you can't tell me God's not real. Mm -hmm. Why? Because how in the world, <laughs> no, there's no way, amen, to stand up and amen. there's no way, amen. No way. amen. No way. It's only by the grace of, God. of the true and living God, amen. amen. Rest of your feet and let's pray together. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank Glory you, God. to God. We yes. thank you and give you praise. In the midst of heartache and pain, God, we thank you, Lord, that you shine a light unto us. Yes. You strengthen us by your presence and by your spirit. Yes, Father. And so we lift you up and we magnify you, O oh God. We pray, Lord, for your consolation and your comfort. Yes, Lord. We pray for your strength yes, and we pray for peace that passes all understanding. We pray, O oh God, that, that you will be true to your word and be mindful of us. Yes, Father. What is man, David said, that thou art mindful of him. Of him. Father, we thank you, God, that you have us on your mind. Yes. And Father, we are praying, oh God, for all those who have lost children. Yes, Lord. Young ones, toddlers, teenagers, yes. millennials, yes. or even full-grown adults, oh God, yes, who have Lord. lived Thank you, God. for many years on this earth. Father, the pain is still the same. And we're praying for comfort yes. for every mother and for every father. For every person who has stepped into the role of mother and father and have lost that younger person. Father, yes. we pray for consolation from heaven. Yes, we Lord. pray that you will wipe the tears from their eyes. We pray, yes, God, that you will send grace on two Jesus. feet. Yes, send friends, oh God, who will listen. Friends who will lend an ear. Friends who will lend a shoulder. Friends, oh God, who will be there. You said a brother is born for the day of adversity. Send brothers, send friends, oh God, in the name, in of, the Jesus, name of Jesus. Yes, Father. Through which you may minister your grace from heaven. Yes. And Father, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. For your faithfulness, for your strength, and for your help. And Lord, we're believing, oh God, that what you have done here today will make a meaningful difference in someone's life. Yes, Lord. And for that, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Now look upon us, O oh God. Yes, Lord. Strengthen us one more time. Yes. Encourage us, lift up our hearts and our spirits. Yes, God. And as you do it, God, we will continue to lift up our hands and our voices and give you the praise. Yes. There truly is none like you, Lord. We love you. Love you, Lord. And we give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. So we praise God. Praise God for Joseph. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I can hear them stories all the time, man. Unless you said something really funny today. You said, <laughs> I don't know how you said it, but it was like, he was there, he was there, but then he didn't know when he left. And that was so true, amen. It's like, because he, he would be there, yes. and then he'd be gone. <laughs> that's an amazing thing. It's just funny. But see, it's things like that. See, because that's something I've never heard, but it's like, that's true. <laughs> yes. Amen. See, that only comes when people aren't afraid to speak. Amen. Amen. And now that becomes a blessing to me. I'm like, yeah, Joseph was like that. He was here and he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> this is what 
Yeah. We talk about it all the time. Like we talk about it. Like we go to the movie. We talk all the day, right? Yeah. So what would happen every time we went to the movie with Joe? He'd come out. What do you say? Okay, so what do you get? He always wanted to rate the movie. Always. <laughs> I give that a nine. <laughs> what do you give it? <laughs> That was his way. He always did that. So it's like, we don't shy away from that, amen. I mean, like, that was part of who he was. Like, yeah. Amen. So listen, we're going to real quick. We're gonna have